So as the big news is this week, Apple's new M1 chips being used in their new Macs are making waves right now. And everyone's really talking about it, with leaks and speculations of its performance having been all over the internet. And there have been a lot of buzz about it these days, but I am most interested in how well can it play games, mostly because since Apple dropped Imagination Technologies GPUs for their own in-house GPUs in the A11 chips launched in the iPhone 10 and 8 series, they have been killing it with large performance gains from generation to the next. So this tells me that Apple's GPU design team is really top class, just like their CPU design team. Most probably the whole reason for this was to prepare for using their own chips and therefore their own GPUs in their Macs lineup. So I am very curious about what Apple has in store for the M1 chips, especially in terms of their graphics performance. Let's take a look at all the evidence we have for the M1 chips currently. As Anantech points out, in the Apple M1 launch event, Apple showed a photo of the chip with an apparent die shot that's clear as day with the details of the chip. Well, if we look closely at it, then we can see that it has a similar architecture as the new Apple A14 chip that they announced for the iPhone 12, just a little bit bigger, making it similar to how they designed the X chips for the iPad Pro designs, which are slightly bigger than the normal iPhone sized chips. So that makes it suspiciously look like how their A14X chips for the new iPad Pros might be like when they do come out. That makes sense since the A14 is their newest architecture design and it wouldn't make sense for Apple to debut the new chips to power Max with a lackluster last generation design. It also is probably the most cost effective way Apple could create the M1 since the same basic chip design will be used for two different products, the A14 and the M1 that makes it possible for us to speculate the performance of the M1 chips by seeing how the A14 chips perform and seeing how the previous iPad Pro X chips like the A12X and A10X performs. Now the new 3D Mark wall dive benchmark is the one that I'm going to take a look at to compare the graphics performance across the different devices. And the benchmark is also cross-platform compatible so it should be really comparable between iOS, Android and also Windows. So in theory, we should be able to compare the scores from any platforms to each other, according to 3 Mark. Here we can see that the new A14 chip that's in the new iPhone 12 is also still an incredibly fast chip. However, it's still a bit odd that the new A14 chips have less graphics performance than the A13 chips. Maybe Apple was aiming for more efficiency this time around, not really raw performance. Since I also did not see much of a performance claim from Apple in the iPhone 12 launch. Then we can also see that the A12X or Z chips are still at the top of the charts for iOS devices scoring nearly 10,000 points. So it makes sense that Apple still uses them in the iPad Pros as they still have the fastest GPUs designed by Apple so far. Comparing the scores to GPUs in typical PCs is where the performance figures gets interesting. The A13 chip on my iPhone SE apparently managed to score 3 times as much as the Intel HD 520 chip in my laptops. Intel Core i7-6500U, which had a pathetic 2349 points. And compared to the Intel UHD 6055 in the last two generation MacBook Pro 13 inch, which scored 5488 points in the fastest recorded benchmark, the A14 scores 6606 points and the A13 scores 7250 points at the max which just basically leaves it in the dust. Even the older A12 chip managed to score a little higher at 5,680 points in the iPhone XS and the 6,176 points in the iPad Air 2019. So clearly, Apple knows how to design a fast GPU. What is interesting is looking at the A12 X and Z performance at almost 10,000 points, it beats out the GT 1030 dedicated graphics cards from Nvidia where the fastest recorded score is 9,216 points. That is just absolutely mind-blowing to think that a mobile chip in a passively cool iPad Pro chassis can beat the 40 watt by itself NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030 graphics chip. Now, only if the 3D Mark wildlife scores are as accurate as 3D Mark claims it to be, then oh boy does Apple have a surprise for us with the new M1 chips. Why? Well, let's take a look at the A12X chip and compare it to the previous iPad Pro chip, the A10X where it's got nearly double the performance uplift over just one generation of a refresh. And I say only a generation because Apple usually only does the X chips once every two generations. So the A11 and A13 chips never had a higher performance X variant made for the iPad Pro. If Apple continues to double the graphics performance with the A14 X chips that's coming out, which as you can speculate will be similar to the M1 chip as well, then that means that the new A14 and M1 chips will score nearly 20,000 points in 3D Mark Wildlife. To put that into perspective, that's more than a GTX 1650 Max Q 
that's usually put into light gaming laptops like the Razer Blade Stealth, where the highest recorded score is at 17,353 points, which is probably also overclocked. Of course, Apple might not be able to keep doubling their graphics or CPU performance every generation, and especially seeing how the A13 chip is about a 27 performance increase over the A12, while the A13 to A14 there's actually a 9% performance regression, then we might not be getting a doubling in performance for the A14X over the A12X. But even if Apple only managed a 50% performance increase for the A14X over the A12X, which is pretty realistic, then that's still in an iPad Pro, which is still passively cooled and only powered by a small battery. But the M1 chip is different, since it'll benefit from much higher thermal design power, which will allow much higher clock speeds, as it is being housed in a much larger chassis, like in the passively cooled MacBook Air, or benefit from active cooling in the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini, whose chassis previously housed 28 watt TDP CPUs, which are more than double what the iPad Air CPUs are allowed to consume, which usually range around the 10 watt of power. That means that in theory, Apple should have no problems to hit over two times the graphics performance of their previous fastest GPU design in the A12Z, which again will beat a GTX 1650 Max-Q if they manage to do that, at least in the cross-platform compatible 3 Mark Wildlife benchmark, which 3 Mark insists is comparable between different operating systems and CPU architectures. Still, the real-world gaming performance will have to be seen when games do launch for the M1, but I have a feeling it will be very surprising indeed. Well that's it for this wild speculation ride of mine, although I do think I do have a solid basis for the speculation, seeing the performance that Apple design GPUs have been putting out and the rate that they've been improving generation over generation. So between the new Nvidia Ampere RTX 3000 series GPUs as well as the new AMD RDNA 2 base RX 6000 series GPUs, the new Apple Silicon M1 chips with their integrated graphics is still just as exciting and interesting for GPU processor designs coming out this year. So I'm just making this video because I'm really quite excited and quite interested in seeing what the new Apple M1 chips can do in terms of graphics performance. Because if my speculation is right, it could be really mind-boggling and really impressive. And maybe gaming in Apple Macs won't be just a joke anymore. And that's it for this video. And if you do like this video, maybe click the like button and also maybe comment down below about what you think about the Apple Silicon M1 chips and what you think their graphics performance might be like and would you consider getting a Mac for gaming if they do perform really well. But yeah, that's it for this video. Maybe subscribe to my channel if you want to see more future videos about computers and also interesting technologies like this. But thanks for watching.